Elaine Mullis is a shy, quiet young woman who speaks in a soft South Georgia drawl. She'd look more at home in a pretty starched lawn dress than in the baggy overall she wore the day we visited her. But that's what you wear in prison. And for the last five months, that's exactly where Elaine Mullis has been, in prison. This was a well-known fact in Atkinson yeah. County mm -hmm. that your husband beat you. Mm -hmm. But he, he was in trouble a lot. Elaine Mullis had never been in any real trouble with the law until one very hot day last July. Here in this small frame house in Pearson, Georgia, in front of her children and several other witnesses, she stabbed her husband Connie to death. Connie Mullis's neighbors describe him as a nice, friendly sort of guy, except when he was drinking. Then, they say, he often became violent. And judging from most reports, he drank and became violent quite a lot during the 13 years he and Elaine were married. When did the beating start? Oh, a week after we got married, approximately somewhere along there. He's giving me two concussions. I was in the hospital this year with a concussion. And uh, he broke my ribs last year. And uh, the year before last, I was in the hospital with a concussion. And uh, he dislocated my vertebrae in two places. And he broke one of my toes. And just things like this, you know. On that hot July day, the last day of his life, Elaine says Connie had been drinking beer and smoking marijuana and giving her trouble. He had knocked me in the, uh, up against the car, and then he had, uh, in the living room, he had beat my head up against the wall three or four times. And then in the bathroom, he had hit me in the head with a shaving can cream. And I remember him choking me. You know, I remember standing by the kitchen sink and had a knife in my hand, and he was a choking me, but I don't remember actually stabbing him. The next thing I remember, he was laying on the floor. Connie Mullis was pronounced dead at the scene with a knife wound in his side. Elaine was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. The trial took place three months later here at the Atkinson County Courthouse. Even though the judge in this case suggested that a lesser charge, like voluntary manslaughter, might be in order, the jury of six men and six women deliberated for less than an hour before finding Elaine guilty of murder. She was sentenced to life in prison. Immediately, there were charges that the trial had been unfair. For one thing, a juror was quoted as saying, if we had let her go, it would have been open season on husbands in Atkinson County. And during the trial itself, 14 witnesses who would have testified about the number and severity of Connie's attacks on Elaine were not allowed to take the stand, including one friend who found Elaine on the doorstep one morning in her nightclothes, bloody from the waist up. Should you have been convicted of first-degree murder? No, ma'am, I don't think so. Why not? You know, probably if it had been in another county, it would have been better. Why, why would that make any difference? He's just kin to so many people there, you know, either by uh, his family, you know, or his stepfather, you know. Connie's cousin, for example, is a deputy clerk of the court. His aunt is a wealthy and influential socialite, and that's not all. His father's the sheriff, or will be, you know. So they figure, look, if we get up there and say anything, we're bound to get caught and stop for this and that and the other. Since the trial, Elaine's case has attracted a great deal of attention from both the news media and from women's rights groups all over Georgia. There's even a free Elaine rally planned for January 10th to raise money for her appeal. But all this publicity depicting Elaine as a helpless victim has left a sour taste in the mouths of these two women, Connie Mullis's sister and cousin, and we'll hear from them tomorrow. In Pearson, Georgia, for Segment 2, B.B. Emmerman, Action News.